Hello, my fellow recruits. Prince Zartu Amnes here, and we're going to be continuing Doki Doki Lurch Club. So, let's get on to it. Woo! Or not, that's New Club Penguin, sorry. Oh, Jack, hi. Hi, pretty girl. She's looking at me like, the fuck do you want? One second. Sorry. Sorry, my dad sent me some pictures. Um, sorry. Let's get on to it. Doki, <laughs> doki. I'm sorry. I was dumb. Uh, let's go for it. Natsuki again just because I want it. Loud. Whistle. <laughs> okay. Hi. That exists. Yes. That exists. What the fuck? Okay. I forgot that happens. Another day passes and it's time for a club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Yep. Just Yuri's body going off of her tit. Welcome back, Artsy chan Oh, it's still like that! <laughs> uh, hi, Yuri. Not sure if it's me or if it's Yuri's expression. But the weight of yesterday's quarrel still hangs in the air a little. What expression? Oh, there it is. Uh, um, Yuri glances over his shoulder looking around the room. Atsuki is reading manga at a desk. And surprisingly, Monica isn't here yet. Suddenly, Yuri takes my arm and pulls me into the corner of the room. About yesterday, I, I really need to apologize. Nothing like that has ever happened before. And something just came over me, I guess. I still think we usually like this. Not just me, but Natsuki as well. Yuri, I'm happy that you're considerate and apologize. You don't have to worry too much. Even though I've only been here a couple of days, I could tell that something was off yesterday. Maybe we were all just a little extra sensitive today because it was our first time sharing poems. But whatever it was, it didn't make me think any less of you. I had already decided that there's no way you can be a bad person. And now that you're apologizing, I know that you didn't really mean it. Uh, Artsy chan don't say those kinds of things so frankly. They make me a little too happy. I'm really glad that you're such an understanding person. 
and I'm really glad that you joined the club. Everything is a little bit brighter a few round and uh sorry, what am I saying right now? I just Hey hey, have you seen Monica? Uh No, I haven't. I was also kinda of wondering where she was. Man Yuri, I'm guessing you haven't either. Yuri is clearly taken back by how calmly Natsu keeps addressing her. No, I haven't. Jeez, this isn't like her at all. I know it's stupid, but I can't help but worry a little bit. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Uh, um, Natsuki, about yesterday. I just want to apologize. I promise, I didn't mean any of the things I said. And I'll do my best to stay under control from now on, so... Yuri, what the heck are you talking about? Did you do something yesterday? Uh? Jeez. <laughs> Whatever on your mind, it sure is nothing. I don't even remember anything bad happening. You're the kind of person who worries too much about the little things, aren't you? Uh, but... <laughs> I'll accept your apology anyway if it helps you feel better about it. Besides, it's kind of nice to hear since I was always afraid he secretly hated me or something like that. <laughs> no, not at all. I don't hate you. <laughs> well, you're kind of weird, but I don't hate you either. Natsuki turns to me. You're still on trial, though. Hey! Suddenly, door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Nah. Well, Natsuki was. I, I was not. <laughs> what took you so long anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. And to be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You could have heard the bell ring, at least. I must have heard it, not have heard it, since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware that you played music as well, Monica. Uh, uh, don't give me more credit than I deserve. I guess I've been practicing for a while, but I'm still not really good at it yet. Still. That must require a lot of dedication, so I'm still impressed. Aw, well thanks, Yuri. You should play something for us sometime. Uh, that's... Monica looks at me. Well... I am working on a song, but it's not quite done yet. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. That sounds cool. I look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Archie Chan. Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean to put any pressure on you or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I was hoping that I could share it with you anyway. I guess that's why I've been practicing so much recently. I see. I'm not sure if Monica was referring to a whole club or just me. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I chose not to bring up anything that the three of us talked about. Besides, Ensuki has already ran off into the closet. Artisan, um, since your compliments put me in a good mood, I was wondering if you'd like to spend some time together today. I mean, in the club. Ah, I suppose so. I don't think I could say no to you after you gave that book to me. Well, I guess I... Need to make sure Natsuki isn't waiting for me. After we finished reading yesterday, she... She's fine. She's reading over there, see? Don't think about her so much. She's used to being ignored. Come on. We're going over there. sent me old pictures because well um my birthday is coming up and i guess they came up in a story feed and um like they're both of cats like me of cats and i like, i'm just so happy i think i've always just been a cat person <laughs> 
So what's this book about? Oh, well. Hmm. I look at the cover of the book. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Basically, it's about this religious camp that was turned into a human experiment prison. And the people trapped there have this trait that turns them into killing machines that lust for blood. But the facility gets even worse. Selectively breeding people by cutting off their limbs and fixating them to. Uh oh, that might be a little bit of a spoiler. Ew! That sounds gross! But anyway, I'm really into it. This is the book I mean, not the thing about limbs. That's kind of. that's kind of dark, isn't it? Yeah, but I had a creepypasta face. <laughs> Eh, still though, it's kinda... Yeah. Also, what are they affixing them to? Their junk? I don't know. In a bit. It may sound like it was gonna be a nice story, so that dark turn came out of nowhere. Uh, are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Rizzi Chung? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy this kind of story, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah. So I forgot that you're into the thing. Okay, hi. Yuri is so shy and inclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that this kind of story... It's the kind of challenge you look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because the world is full of horrible people, and we're all worthless anyway. And suddenly... <laughs> I I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again, I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books fill my thought, my whole body gets incredibly... I kind of forget to pay attention to other people, so I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange, and please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. At least I can do is listen. It's a literature club, after all. Uh, that's... Well, that's true. In fact... I might as well get started reading it, shall I? Okay, Yuri. Yes. I mean, you don't have to, but... <laughs> what are you saying? Let me just get the book. I quickly return the book that I have put into my bag. Alright, it's fine for Sawyer, right? I slipped into a seat next to Yuri's. Uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not like I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Alright. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading company. It's as if I can feel a president over his shoulder as I read. It's not particularly a bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at the book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. Sorry. I was just baiting the feeling of your body. Ew. Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I mean, that's a mood. I apologize so much. I do. I don't mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's, and then holds my book between the two of them. Uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Feels like my left arm is in the way. Sorry. Uh, I guess it makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Why is it just quiet? Wait, was that computer always there? Hold on a second. Hold on. I'm gonna look something up. I have to look this up because I don't think the computer was there. I don't think the computer was there.
Oh, it was there. Huh. I guess I never noticed. Uh, I just didn't notice. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book in between her thumb and forefinger. Uh, I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, I turn the page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after I flip it to her side. But holding it like this... We're held even closer than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face as she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Eh? To turn the page. Uh, sorry. I think I got a little bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Uh, that's okay. You're not used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do since you've been so patient with me. Yeah, thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own violation. By my own fish fish to bed to bed. It's a bed to bed. It's a bed to bed. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning the page almost feels like an intimate exchange. Ew. My thumb genuinely letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it underneath her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but main character reminds me of you a little bit. Eh? No, I don't relate to this character at all. Definitely not. Really? I was just thinking, the way she second guesses things, she says and all that. Uh, that's what you were talking about? Sorry. I thought you meant something else about her. Something else? Uh, never mind. We didn't get that far yet. So, I don't know why that came into my head. <laughs> You're really feeling alright? <sighs> Yuri has been a little fidgety ever since we started reading. You can rest if you're feeling sick or something. Your breathing is a little... My breathing? Yuri puts her hand to her chest as if to feel her heartbeat. Uh, I didn't even notice. I anyway, I'm fine. I, I just need some water. Alright, don't push yourself. Yuri stands up and practically rushes out of the classroom. What on earth was that about? Archie-chan, did something happen just now? Eh? I have no idea. Yuri was acting a little strange, I guess. So you don't know anything. Sorry. Sorry, I can't say I do. Are you worried about her? Oh, no, not really. I was just making sure that you didn't do anything to her. N no nothing <laughs> Don't worry, I believe you, silly. Yuri just does this sometimes. So it's nothing alarming. Alrighty, if you say so. Anyway, why don't we start sh with sharing poems with each other? Eh? Shouldn't we wait for Yuri? Well, she might be a while, so I figured we should get started without her. Is that okay? Yeah, I was just asking. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left the book. And I slip it back into my bag. Well, it's not terrible, but it's pretty disappointing after your last one. Then again, if this one was as good as your last one, then I would be completely pissed. Well, I guess I'm going to try something a little different this time. Fair enough. You're still new to this, so I wouldn't expect you to find your style right away. I mean, everyone in the club writes really differently from each other. Maybe you'll find a little influence from all of us. For instance, I noticed that you were spending time with Yuri today. Not that I care who you spend time with. After all, I was taught to never expect anything from anybody. So it's not like I was waiting for anything. Still, you should look over my poem at least. You'll probably be able to learn to film it. Ah, yes. I have no idea what the fuck this says. Archie chan why didn't you come read with me today? I was waiting for you. I was waiting for a long time. It was the only thing I had to look forward to today. Why did you ruin it? Do you like Yuri more? Do you think you're better off than I was supposed to her? Are you listening to me? Yuri is a sick freak. That should be obvious by now. So just play with me instead. Okay? You don't have to hate me, Artie-chan. 
You don't hate me, Ertachan. Do you? Do you hate me? Do you love me? Do you want to make me go home crying? The club is the only place I feel safe. Don't ruin it for me. Don't ruin it, please. Just stop talking to Yuri. Play with me instead. That's all I have. Oh, the music and her face is pale. There's blood. I think that's different. Play with me. Play with me! Hi! <laughs> okay, Monica. Hi again, Artie chan How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share your poem you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I gave my poem to Monica. Alright. Great job, Artie chan I was going all in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easy for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way it always counts if I put in some effort. <laughs> That's fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know what? That Yuri like is kind of writing, right? It's all full of imagery and symbolism. Sometimes I feel like Yuri's mind is totally detached from the reality. I don't mean that it's a bad thing though, but sometimes I get the impression that she has totally given up on people. She spends so much time in her own dead that it's probably a bunch more in much more interesting place for her. But that's why she gets so happy when you treat her with a lot of kindness. I don't think she's used to being indulged like that. She must be really sorry for social interaction, so I don't blame her for coming on a little strongly, like earlier. I think she gets too stimulated and she ends up withdrawing. Suddenly door opens. Yuri! I'm back. Did I miss anything? Not really. We all started sharing poems with each other. Uh, already? I'm sorry for being late. No need to apologize. We still have plenty of time, so... I'm glad that took all the time you needed. Alright, thanks Monica. I suppose I should get my poem now. But anyway. Do you want to read my poem now? I like the way it turned out, so I hope you do too. Save me. The colors. They won't. Well, bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, an endless caffeine of meaningless noise. The noise won't stop. Violent, grating whispers, speaking, screeching, piercing, sin, constant, tangent. Like playing on a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a knife on a breathing rib cage. <laughs> Delete her. Sorry, I know it's kind of abstract. I'm just trying to, um, well, never mind. There's no point in explaining. I mean, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when I'm... Who am I talking to? Can you hear me? Tell me you can hear me. Anything. Please help me. Okay. That's my advice for today. Thank you for listening. I've been waiting for this. Let's see what we have written for today. Yuri smiles and takes a deep breath. I like just holding it. Uh, I mean, the poem turned out good. Uh, uh, oh, there are some things that you can work on, but that doesn't really matter. It feels like anything written by you is a treasure. <laughs> that came out a little awkward. Let, let's move on. Here's the poem I wrote. I don't feel like it or anything. Wheel. A rotating wheel turning an axle, grinding bathes lantern gearbox, falling sky, seven holy stakes, a dock ship, a portal to another world, a thin rope tied to a thick rope, a on horses, something gear boy, expanding universe, time controlled by slipping cogwheels, existence of 
god swimming with power with open water is all directions drowning a prayer written in blood a prayer written in time drowning snakes in time devouring snakes with human eyes threat connecting all living human eyes a kaleidoscope of holy stakes expanding gear boy sky of expanding stars god disproving the existence of god a wheel rotating in six dimensions frosty gears and a ticking clock. A clock that ticks one second for every something of the planet. A clock that ticks something times. A, a clock that ticks 40 times. Every time it ticks, every second time. A bolted head of holy stakes tied to the existence of a dock ship in the world. A kaleidoscope of blood written in clocks. A time devoting prayer connecting the sky of 40 gears to open human eyes in all directions. Breathing gear boy. Breathing bolt head. Breathing ship. Breathing portal. Breathing snakes. Breathing God. Breathing blood. Breathing holy stakes. Breathing human eyes. Breathing time. Breathing prayer. Breathing sky. Breathing wheel. The fuck? <laughs> doesn't really matter what it's about. My mind has been a little hyperactive lately, so I had to get out on your pen. Ah! That is a, a pen that fell out of your backpack yesterday, so I took it home for skate keeping an eye on. I just really like the way that it writes, so I wrote the poem of it, and now you're touching it. <laughs> I'm okay. What did I just... I can pretend this conversation never happened. You can give the poem, though. The fuck? A dream. I was wandering in an abandoned warehouse at night. I was lost, looking for an exit. I just wanted to go home. I came upon a huge empty room, a ceiling and walls beyond the deep blackness. My steps were quick in order to hurry to the other side, or to a wall, anything. Suddenly, the ground was no longer beneath my feet. I stepped into a hole of intermittent width. I fell for a good five seconds before crashing into warm water. Figuring out which way was up, I surfaced myself to the air. I surfaced myself. The air was humid, and the sounds of my splashing reverberated endlessly. My vision was completely swallowed by dark. With one hand, I could feel the damp metal, metal wall of the container. My lungs were already getting tired. Okay, huh? Okay, everyone. Walter Brady each his problems, right? We have something we need to get over today, so if everyone could sit in front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, we really have to do something for the festival. It's not like we can put anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't think... I don't really do well in last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? Look. I know everyone's been a little more lively ever since Artsy Chung joined and we start some club activities. But this isn't time for us to become complacent. We still only have four members. And festivals are only really chance to find more, you know? What's so great about getting new members anyway? We already have enough to be considered an official club. More members just means everything gets noisier and more difficult to manage. That's okay. I don't think you're looking at it the right way at all. Don't you want to share your passion with as many people as you can? To inspire them and to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? The literature club is supposed to be a place where people can express themselves like they can't do anywhere else. It's a place so intimate and you don't want to leave. I know the, I know you feel that way too. I know we all do. So that's why we should work hard to put something together for the festival, even if it's something small. Right there, it's Chum? Uh, oh come on! You can't take advantage of Artsy Chan too griefy just because he doesn't know how to say no to anything. Look, Monica, do you really think any of us joined the club with other people in mind? Yuri never even talked until Artsy Chan joined. As for me, I just like like it better here than I do at home. And Artsy Chan isn't even passionate about literature in the first place. And that's everyone. 
Sorry, but you really the only one who's interested in finding new members. The rest of us are fine like this. I know you're president and all, but you should really consider our opinions for once. Monica is clearly taking back Nansuki's words. That's not true at all. I'm sure you and Artsy Chum will want to get more members too, right? I don't know about Yuri, but I'm kind of indifferent. If I showed it as much enthusiasm as Monica wanted, then I would have probably been lying. Still, if it's up to me to rescue the situation. Um, no. Natsuki's right, isn't she? This club is nothing more than a place for a few people to hang out. Why did I think that everyone here saw it the same way I did? But that doesn't mean we're against getting new members or anything. Artsy-chan, why did you even join the club? What were you hoping to get out of it? Well, not really something I can be honest about, is it? In fact, I remember you weren't even given a choice to join. Malika sits down and stares at her desk. What's the point of all this anyway? What if starting a club was a mistake? Now you've done it, Natsuki. What? Me? I just spoke my mind! Is it a crime to be honest? It's not about being honest. It's about your choice. Besides, you have no way to speak for everyone else in the club like that. You don't understand at all. I just I just want a place that feels nice to hang out for a few friends. Is there a problem being, with the club being like that for me? There aren't there aren't many places other places like that for me. And Monica just wants to take it away from me. She's not taking anything away. No Arti Chan! It's not the same. It wouldn't be the same with the direction she wants to take it. If I wanted, then I could have just joined any other stupid club. But this one, I mean, at least for a little bit of time, it was nice. Natsuki started packing up her things. Going home. I, I feel like I don't belong here right now. Natsuki. Natsuki and Nora's here in Rock's side of the classroom. This is bad. I don't know what to do. Well, I have an opinion on the festival. I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent, I guess. Who cares about that obnoxious brat? I mean, I like how nice and quiet the club is right now, and I'm just happy with you here. But still, I'm the vice president. It's not right for me to ignore responsibilities like that. Nobody would cry if she killed herself. God damn! Okay. I should do my best to consider if everyone's perspectives and make the decision that's right for the club. What about you, Artsuchan? What do you want to get out of this club? Yuri repeats the same question as Monka. I decide giving my indirect answer better than anything. I think the most important thing for everyone is getting along. And for the club to provide something that you can't get anyone else. I don't think it's about how many members, but rather the quality of each member. That's what will end up making a literature club a special place. I see. I really agree with you. Each member contributes to their own qualities in a special way. With each change in members, the identity of the club as a whole changes too. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, stepping out of your comfort zone. So, if you like Del Monica with the festival, then I'm on your side as well. Alright. Well, maybe we can all talk to Natsuki tomorrow. You're not. Hey, Yuri. Eh? I, um, know things were a little awkward yesterday, but I feel like you deserve to know that I still think you're a wonderful vice president and also a wonderful friend. Monica, I know I want to do everything I can to make this the best club ever, okay? Me too. Yeah. So I'll go home for today. We'll all talk about the festival tomorrow. Okay. I look forward to it. Shall we go out to Chun? Um, please don't take this the wrong way, but I'm going to chat with Artie Chan a little bit before we leave. I just want to see what he thinks of his time here and all that. It's important to me as president. Yuri looks a little troubled, but she didn't protest. Okay. I trust your judgment, Monica. In that case, I'll see you two of you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Monica waves as Yuri leaves the classroom. Phew. Things have been a little hectic lately, haven't they? Artie chan I just want to make sure that you're doing the time in the club. I really hate you if you're unhappy. I kind of feel like I'm responsible for that. I do care about you, you know? I don't like seeing other girls giving you a hard time. With how me and Natsuki is and everything, and you're being a little, you know. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like you and I are only the real people here, you know what I mean? But it's weird and all. The time you've been here, we've probably gone spending time together. I mean, I guess it's technically only been a couple days. Sorry, I didn't mean to say something weird. I hope it's just something I'm talking about. 
Things I know you can only understand. Wait, no, no, stop it! Alright, that's the end of this episode. <laughs> um. Like, I saved. Let's check out pictures. An unusual poem by Yuri. Continuation of Monica's first poem, only appearing in Act 2. One of the 11 special poems, DDLC selects three random special poems to appear when she started for the first time. Okay, so... Simple character sheet of Natsuki's initial design. It's actually pretty cute. Yeah, I like it. A sketch piece by David Evelyn. To test and compare different uniform styles. Characters featured in Bertrand are designed by David for the purpose of testing the uniforms. Huh. Cool. Um, well, that's it for today's episode, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye!